Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We are here to talk about the future of live YouTube golf events, specifically the one they have going on in June, Good Goods event, French Lick. Who's gonna come, who's not, and if the incentive is not there, for creators. Now this was sparked from a Peter Finch video. I absolutely love that guy. Let me just come out and say that. Met him in person down at the Good Good Live event. He's gotta be one of my favorite human beings on planet Earth. Pete, I absolutely love you. Thank you for saying this because it sparked the idea for this video. So credit to him. I'm gonna play the clip for you guys and then we're gonna react to it, but it's touching on his opinion. He had a great overall podcast. It's like an hour and 14 minutes long. Go listen to it, I'll link it below, discussing everything from his take on the Good Good Desert Open. A lot of the points we talked about in our previous commentary video, he also discussed from his point of view, specifically points around not getting any airtime, being a player coming over from the UK, not getting any airtime in the event. What was his take on that? His take on the streaming being split over to Peacock, once again, as a non-US based creator, with a lot of non-US based fans, he has a very good take on that. His fans were not able to watch him play golf, not only because he wasn't on the broadcast, but because the actual broadcast, half of it wasn't available in his territory. So again, very much worth the listen for his takes on that. Obviously an OG in the space, over a decade of creating in this YouTube golf world. So his opinion is definitely widely respected and definitely necessary for our community. So check that out. But the clip we're gonna play today is specifically touching on would he do it again and potentially what might need to be the incentive for the event in June and future events in order to get creators out. Let's listen to that together. So no one would be playing in this event unless they created content, specifically mostly on YouTube. So if you go to a live event, all of a sudden you're not making a video. Yeah. Mm. Certainly in the sense that that video was going out straight away. Yeah. Also, like I said, the, the bigger the creator is, the more people they're bringing to that event. How will they, how are they going to be like compensated? Yeah. By like, by like in terms of fees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause I yeah. mean, obviously for this event, we went over there, you know, I wanted to kind of experience this, but if we were to go to another event, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily want to pay for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, I, and I know that, you know, a lot of the, the biggest creators in this in this field, they're not going to be going on somebody else's live stream for nothing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's how it all works out from there. And because it is everyone's dream, I think, certainly in the golf YouTube space, is to have like a full tournament, to have like a Ryder Cup. Mm -hmm. you know, the, these things have been kind of mentioned and, and going around for years, and I think it really would work, but it's, who organizes it? How's it split? Mm. Like, where's it placed? Because yeah. because that's the thing. If it's a YouTube-based event, it has to be on YouTube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Listen, there's a lot of goodness in that little clip there. So once again, shout out to Pete. Listen, there there's a lot of different things to unpack here. Number one, I think I was a little naive potentially with the incentive for creators. When I was first hearing of this event, we had been talking about a live YouTube golf event for over a year now. This is something that we had brought up back about March or May of last year, so maybe a little less than a year, but we had been championing this thing forever, saying that it needed to happen. So when we heard confirmation, book signed, sealed, delivered, that there was a YouTube golf event, I said like, you have to be there as a creator, you have to be there, you have to go, it's like the most important thing for YouTube golf, like blah, 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 blah. Which I think Pete sort of echoed a little bit because it was the first one. Being the first one, these creators had enough of an incentive to just be a part of it. It's something different and something new. It's hosted by one of the biggest, if not the biggest brand in YouTube golf. So it could make sense just to attend. Plus they piggybacked off of waste management, which a lot of those creators were down in Scottsdale for. So it was a relatively low lift for a lot of these creators. A lot of these creators, Pete included, he said he didn't travel out just for this. It was on the back end of a trip. He was in California. It was just was an easy stop by. That's the first one though. That same incentive, Pete sort of hinted at, and I kind of agree with, may not be there for subsequent events. This was a very cool groundbreaking thing that Good Good did. However, was there much actual benefit for these independent creators? I really, I thought there might've been more potentially. And again, I wasn't playing in the event, so I can't really talk to if I would have felt any type of benefit from playing in the event. But given what a lot of these creators are saying, that a lot of them obviously didn't get a ton of airtime and whatever, just the nature of the tournament, was there a bunch of benefit for them in going to this. Already having large audiences, some of their audiences not even be able to watch the event. Was that benefit there? 
I think you can make the argument that it depends on the creator because obviously for Ben and Ashton who came into this as mainly short form based creators, not only did they win the event and get a ton of exposure for that, but they also were in good following good, good, a good, good week, sorry, down in Tucson in a bunch of videos that will be coming out at some point, which will do wonders to boost their long form careers if they want to start making long form content on YouTube. So I think they, they got a hundred times benefit. So you could use the old tiger quote that winning solves everything. And if you just won the event, then you would feel the benefit. But for a lot of these creators, like let's talk the big cojones, Rick Shields, Bob does sports, even like toss Peter Finch in that group, toss all of these OG, like needle moving Grant Micah creators for those individuals, aside from winning the event, is there much benefit in going if this is something that they have to pay their own way to take out time from their jobs of being content creators they're not creating their own videos and if they are i mean i don't know about you guys but every single mother father son daughter posted a hour round at the good good desert open video and it's just i mean i don't know you can only watch so many of those and still be interested in them so like if the content created is just being like super repetitive then you're not really getting that great of content anyway so a lot of creators especially the big dogs the grants the ricks who post like only the creme de la creme content they are probably not going to get much of a video out of this anyway so you're asking them to go to this thing to pay their own way there and really potentially only have benefit from it if they actually win the event so that's where Pete's kind of conversation and he's speaking from his own perspective. But the reason why I put Rick and Bob in the thumbnail of this video is because those are two of the biggest entities who did not attend this event. I'm not saying they held out because they wanted money. Rick obviously gave very legitimate reasons why he couldn't be there. We still haven't heard anything from Bob to sports, but I mean, whatever. But my point is, is that creators of that size for future events, would they come without some sort of at least travel subsidies, subsidization, if not some sort of fee for playing in the event? And again, this is something Peter talked about. And I think it was a very valid point. As a large scale creator who most of the time when you travel, you're making a, a net positive out of it. You're traveling, you're creating all this content that you wouldn't be able to create at home. You're getting collaborations, whatever. You upload those videos. Those videos do really well because they're unique and they're different. They make a lot of money on AdSense. They pay for the trip and then some, and you have a profit that comes out of it. That's how these things work. Not every time, but most of the time. But now you'd be asking, let's say Rick Shields to travel from the UK to Indiana. I don't think there's anything else in Indiana. And you know, spend X amount of time there, be in this video, to be in this live stream, and then really, like theoretically, unless he wins, like we said, get nothing from. It. So I do think this is a problem that not just good, good with the Indiana event, but all these people wanting to host live YouTube golf events, it's a realistic problem they're going to face. And it's one I think I was a little bit naive to with this one. I think I was blinded by the excitement of it and the fact that YouTube golf is moving forward and the excitement behind the fact that good, good, Again, one of the biggest brands in golf is putting their name behind it. They're losing money to put on this event. Like they're really making strides for this YouTube golf community, which I think is huge. And I think this event, seeing the fact that it pulled more views than a DP World Tour or a Live Golf event, like it's needle moving. And these things are going to be able to happen again. But the question is, how do you continue to incentivize these creators to come? So that's where I think Peter Finch's take is very interesting. I'd like to hear your thoughts on it. But yeah, like, is it because even like a prize pool, that's the other thing, right? Like, let's just say theoretically, you tossed up 50K for first place, you know, 40 for second, 30, 20, 10 for fifth place. That's 10 creators that are going to be making money. If you come fifth, you're probably barely gonna scratch your travel expenses. And even if you come first, splitting 50 by two, a lot of these creators can get $25,000 for talking about a product in, for 30 seconds in one of their videos. Like it's not, it's not a needle moving amount of money. And then you take five grand of that and you pay for your own travel expenses and maybe another five grand to pay for your videographer's travel expenses. So then you're really only netting like $15,000 profit. Like it would have to be a very substantial prize pool to make sense for these creators. So then the fee question comes into play. But Peter talked about this later on in the podcast that like that does get murky. It does get messy when you're trying to negotiate fees with these guys, almost like appearance fees, like when you have like celebrities show up to clubs or whatever it is. Like I'm sure these guys, these top dogs have done things for appearance fees before, like whether it be like go to a golf course or whatever. But at the same time, like you're trying to negotiate these fees with who's ever putting on the event. And I just, I think that could also be 
a murky water. So listen, it's, it's a very interesting dilemma. And it's one that I didn't necessarily see coming as much, but it makes a lot of sense, especially when looking forward to future events. We had the initial hype, the proving grounds that you want to be there to be there to say you were at the first one. But now that we've seen it, and now that we've seen what's come out of it, is that incentive still going to be there? For creators in the future my hope is obviously yes my hope is that everyone that can attend would want to attend this event but i think it is a very valid question of like why would they what is their true incentive in doing this unless you are like going to win and you're like very certain that you could win and you just have that competitive fire and drive that you're willing to put it out there because like pga tour players they pay their own way to go to pga tour events like yeah they make a boatload of money even if they come like 40th but like you know that some weeks they miss the cut and they make no money but it's that ability to compete and that chance of winning and they believe every week that they can win so like if, if you have that maybe but listen again i think it's a very interesting unique problem to solve so be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments below any big creators if you guys are watching this comment down below send me a message are you guys interested in going to the future ones i won't share your stuff publicly if you don't want it i'm just genuinely curious but yeah comment down below send me a message what what would make you go what is going to be enough to incentivize you to go Thank you guys so much for tuning in to today's video. I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.